Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be adding a lot of storage to the all new ROG Ally X. So one of the big main changes here is the fact that the Ally X uses a 2280 M.2 SSD instead of the 2230 in the original ROG Ally. And it comes with one terabyte right out of the box. But you know, since we've got a 2280 sized M.2 slot here, we can add a lot of storage for a lot cheaper than we could with the original ROG Ally utilizing that 2230 M.2 SSD. And in this video, we're going to be adding a 4 terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade M.2 SSD. It is PCIe 4.0 plus a 1 terabyte micro SD card, bringing it really close to 5 terabytes of storage in the ROG Ally X. Before we get started here, I do want to mention this video is not endorsed by ASUS. You know, they really do recommend using that one terabyte drive that's already pre-installed, but I want as much storage as possible, so I'm actually doing this at my own risk. Obviously, in order to upgrade the storage here, you will need a much larger drive. I opted to use the Kingston Fury Renegade. It's a 4 terabyte PCIe 4.0 drive. These things are super quick, and I use the smaller ones in a lot of my PC builds. But I also picked up a heatsink just in case we can fit it in the Ally X. I'll leave a link in the description to everything I'm using here. I've got this flat heat sink along with a little sticky heat shield that'll go on the back side of the SSD. Usually when I upgrade an SSD, I don't mind doing a clean install, but this time I've got a lot already installed on the drive inside of the Ally X. So what I'm going to do here is actually clone the drive, but keep in mind there are other ways to go about this. Like using the built-in ASUS Cloud Recovery from the BIOS, this is one of the main ways that I did the original ROG Ally when upgrading the SSD in that. But I've got a different way. I'm actually going to be doing it in Windows with a third-party application so I can keep everything that I have here. It's basically just going to clone the drive. And in order to do this, I've got an M.2 to USB adapter here. They're pretty cheap and they do come in really handy. And keep in mind, I mean, after you've removed the one terabyte drive from this, you can install it into this adapter and use it as an external hard drive. But the method I'm going to be using, we will need this adapter here because we're going to do it all from within Windows. I'm going to take that Kingston Fury 4 terabyte drive and just install it into this M.2 to USB adapter. Now we can go ahead and plug this into the ROG Ally X. And just to make this a bit easier on everybody, I'm going to plug this into my game capture device so we can just kind of record the screen here. I've just connected my game capture to give you a closer look. And we've got that 4 terabyte drive plugged in with the adapter. But as you can see under this PC, devices and drives, it's not showing up. And that's because it's not formatted properly. We're going to let the software we're using format this drive. But just to make sure it's connected, you can always head to your partition manager. And right here, we've got an unknown drive attached. And of course, it's advertised as a 4 terabyte drive, but we're actually working with 3.7 terabytes, which is still a lot. There are several different ways to clone your hard drive, or in this case, an SSD. But I found the easiest one to use here is actually EaseUS Disk Copy. Now, this is not free software, unfortunately. It does require payment. I think regular price is 20, but you can find coupon codes online. Just search up for a coupon code. And you can do a one time buy. So it's not going to be an auto renewal. When you're checking out, there'll be a little box. But this is the easiest way that I've found. And I've used this several times in the past. And I'm not sponsored by this company or anything. And there are free substitutes online. But the good ones have actually just kind of dried up. I think they might have sold off to companies like this, you know, that make you pay for it. And the reason I'm using this is because I actually bought it a few weeks ago for another project I have. If you want to use free software, over on Tom's Guide, there's a great guide right here, how to clone your hard drive on Windows. And what they're using is Reflect. So just keep in mind, there are free options out there but I'm going to be using EaseUS because it works out really well and I've already got access to the software, but I will leave a link in the description to that Tom's Guide guide so you can do this for free. So I've got the software installed, but there's one last thing I want to do here. I actually want to disable BitLocker now and then I can re-enable it on the new drive once everything's up and running, but this way we're not going to be stuck with encryption codes that we need to put in to boot up this SSD. With BitLocker off, we can basically use this drive in any other PC. You can find this in your device encryption settings. And right here, you want to make sure it is off. So mine's completely off right now. I can re-enable it once I get the new drive up and running. Since I'm using that EaseUS disk copy, basically, I'm just going to start it up here. 
And I'll show you one of the reasons I like using this is because as soon as we get this up and running, a new drive on this computer was found. Do you want to migrate the OS to the new drive? I'm going to choose yes. The top blue one is going to be our one terabyte drive that came pre-installed in the ROG Ally X. The green drive is the drive we have plugged in. I'll choose proceed. And it already started the cloning process. So we're going to give this some time to finish up. Once it's done, we can actually install this new drive in the ROG Ally X. That was actually quicker than I thought, around 40 minutes. And now it's going to ask us if we want to boot this from USB. We want to choose no here because we want this as an internal drive. So we'll just choose no, close the software down, and now we can install this drive into the Ally X. I've shut the system completely down. With this model, you do need to be careful about pulling the back off because we do have one ribbon cable that connects to the rear end buttons. But we've got six screws here, regular, smaller Phillips head screwdrivers, gonna be able to get them just fine. And remember, the center bottom one isn't gonna come completely out, it's a bit stationary. Popping the back off is much easier with a little spudger like this. There are a few clips, but it's quite easy to do. Just take your time with it and don't pull it all the way up because like I mentioned, there is a ribbon cable that needs to be unplugged and it connects to our rear end buttons. We can just flip this clip up, unplug that ribbon cable, and now we can get the back shell out of the way. Personally, love the way they've designed the internals on the new ROG Ally X. We've got that huge 80 watt hour battery. And if you haven't seen this yet, I did want to give you just a quick look. Smaller fans, but they do produce more air. And uh, overall, I think it's set up really nicely. Having that 22 80 millimeter M.2 SSD right in the middle just makes it really easy to get to. Plus, we do have room to add a smaller heat sink on it. I highly recommend unplugging the battery before you do any of this. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that one terabyte drive that came pre-installed. Single screw. We should be able to get it right out of here. Now that we've got the stock drive removed, I can move over to my Kingston Fury Renegade 4 terabyte M.2 SSD. And again, I did use a flat aluminum heatsink on one side. And on the other side, I used a thermal shield. Links for all of this will be down in the description. This should slide right in place of that stock drive. There's actually more room in here than I thought. And I opted for a flat heat sink because the uh, battery cable that goes in here does need to go right over that uh, heat sink that we installed on the M.2. I didn't want any sharp edges on that heat sink. And if we take a closer look, I mean, you can see this fits in here perfectly, even with that aluminum heat sink installed. Really glad that they gave us room here and everything does go back together pretty nicely. But remember, you will need to plug those rear keys in. We've got that ribbon cable that needs to be plugged back in. But once that's done, we can reassemble the unit and boot it up. Here's that stock one terabyte drive. Uh, one thing to know is if your unit doesn't come on, just plug it into power real quick. There's kind of a little bit of a fail safe there. Just plug it in, light will come on, then you can unplug it and boot it up or leave it plugged in if you want. But since I cloned the drive, there's nothing else that I need to do. We're basically working with that same drive. Everything's in the same location. I've already got Steam games installed. It's ready to go. But instead of a one terabyte drive that was almost maxed out with all of the games I had installed, I've got a four terabyte drive in this unit. But of course, we can always use a little more storage. So I'm going to install a one terabyte micro SD card. And I know the ROG Ally isn't on the market just yet. This is actually going to give me a lot of time to kind of test that four terabyte drive and this micro SD card. I do want to kind of put it through its paces because, you know, if you're familiar with the ROG Ally, you know that a lot of people had their micro SD card reader fail. Now, they did extend the warranty on that, so uh, keep that in mind. You can head over to their website and check that out. And most of the time with these cards, they're going to be formatted EXT. You definitely want to format this NTFS, so I'm going to get that done. And we can take a closer look at how much storage we have here. Plus, I want to run a speed test on that SSD. And as you can see, we've got quite a bit of storage now on the ROG Ally X. It's not quite 5 terabytes. It's 4.5, but coming up from the stock 952 gigabytes of storage, this is a massive upgrade, and I'm going to be able to put as many games on here as I really want to right now. I ran a speed test on both of these drives and the micro SD card. First up, we've got the stock Ally X 1TB drive. 
not too shabby. I mean, this is a quick drive in the unit right now. You're not going to really notice any kind of slowdowns due to storage speeds. But when it comes to the Kingston Fury Renegade, I mean, we've got way faster read and write speeds with this drive. Plus the fact that we've got a lot more storage here. And the last thing I wanted to give you a look at was this micro SD card speed. Now these are actually really inexpensive cards. I've used several of them in the past. I've actually got a couple in my ROG allies, the original models, and I've used the silicon power cards in Raspberry Pis. Never really had an issue with any of them. They're not the fastest on the market, but at $57 for a one terabyte card coming in at 99 megabytes write, 99 megabytes read, this is a great way to add some inexpensive storage to your handheld. Overall, I think it was a really easy install. We've got plenty of storage here on the Ally X now. Given the fact that we can go up to four terabytes with this is pretty awesome. And again, I do want to mention that this video is not endorsed by Asus whatsoever. I really haven't heard much on upgrading the SSDs. So if you're going to do this, I would definitely do it at your own risk. And of course, if you don't want to disassemble your device, just keep that stock one terabyte drive in there and add a micro SD card. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have more Ally X videos coming up. Uh, once we can do the full reviews on this thing, I've got a lot to show you guys. Uh, battery life on this thing is absolutely amazing. So if you're interested in seeing videos like that, make sure you hit the like button and think about subscribing. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.